Good Saturday morning, everybody. Last week, we started a series on the basics of engine blueprinting. Today, I'm gonna to pull back the curtain on cylinder heads and show you the basic components, how they work, and how it relates to engine blueprinting. So stay tuned. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome our newest channel members, Bruce Siverston, Ken R., Bob Simeon, Marcel Theralt, and Scott Wade. I hope I pronounced those right, guys. Thank you so much for supporting our efforts and keeping the content like this coming. And I appreciate all of you who have called and ordered parts from us uh, as well. You're supporting a small business and you're helping us feed our families and you're greatly appreciated. So if you don't mind, please take a second to subscribe and hit the thumbs up and the little bell so you'll get notifications and you can follow along with this series and other series that we do. So the cylinder head. In general, all overhead valve engines will have the same components and work pretty much the same way. You'll have an intake and an exhaust valve, then you'll have valve springs, valve spring retainers, you'll have locks that go inside these retainers, then the valve stem goes through a valve guide, the valves when they're inserted into the head, there's no guide in this head, but when the valves are inserted in the head, they go, they rest on a valve seat, which is this, it's a hardened material, and they go through the guide, which is this, like that and then when everything is assembled the springs will hold the valve closed until the camshaft and lifters push up on a push rod the rocker arm then down on the valve seems simple enough right truth is there's a lot of magic that can happen in a cylinder head it is the gateway that controls the incoming and outgoing air and fuel into an engine it can also be an engine's downfall if it's not done correctly. How and to what level of precision a head is machined and assembled is, is a key element in engine blueprinting. This is where the details really matter, guys. Things like the shape and the angles of the valve seat, the width and the placement of the valve seat contact area here where it meets, meets the head, the sizes of the valves, the valve stem protrusions, which is determined by how far the seat is machined. Of course, there's no valve guide in here, but how far the seat is machined, how far the stem of the valve sticks up on the opposite side of the head, the material that's used for the valve guide, which is here, the installed height of the spring once you put it in with the retainer, the spring seat pressures, the size and shape of the combustion chamber, which is here, are all equally important. Similar to cylinder boring and honing, the method by which all of this goes together matters too. And we really haven't even begun until we start talking about the port design and shape, the hours of testing it takes to find the perfect port for the perfect valve size, for the perfect cam, and the perfect compression ratio. So to give you an idea of the differences between those production engines, let's go over some different ways that a head can be assembled and how it can be done. So never mind all of the other factors, again, the compression ratio valve sizes, the actual design that could be specific to a particular owner. But let's talk about how it's assembled. Now this is a head off of an uh, Indian 111. You can see that it's fully assembled. Then uh, all of my uh, M8 heads, we've got them in production right now, so sorry I don't have an M8 head to show you. But let's talk about just the valve guide itself. As I, as I said before, when you're taking a, a stock cylinder head down, you have to remove the valve guides. Now, the guide is a harder material than the base metal, the casting, which is aluminum. So when you pull that guide out or press that guide out, it pulls some aluminum with it. Now, 
there's one way you can just buy a valve guide that has an, a, a half or one thou oversize OD cold press that guide into the head and it can be a rather generic fit on the ID where the valve stem comes through and basically they run a very very high tolerance so that when you press it in and it squeezes in on the guide a little bit you still have enough room between the stem and the guide so you don't really have to do any reaming that's the quick and easy way to do it but on a blueprinted engine or a custom built set of cylinder heads what happens is when that stock valve guide is removed you measure the bore size to a very specific interference fit to the OD of your valve guide. Once that's pressed in and then it cools, you measure each individual valve stem and very precisely ream or bore and hone the ID of the valve guide. That ensures oil control, assures that the valve will be stable and the longevity of the engine, but that sort of thing takes time. Then the next step, when you're machining the valve seat, which that's a valve seat there. So when you machine the valve seat, exactly how far this valve protrudes on the other side of the head matters. And the tolerance from the intake side to the exhaust side, it matters because you have a fixed rocker arm on the top you have your valve stem coming through here like so changing that valve stem protrusion changes the angle of the rocker arm okay now there's you can run a rather loose tolerance on that or you can run it pretty tight but as you can imagine the tighter you keep that tolerance and the better that approach angle is the engine will be quieter. Now it, it, it will be less stress on the valve train, less side load on the valve, which aids against valve and guide wear. So the more perfect that that alignment can be, the longer the engine's going to last, the more reliable it's going to be. Once you get your valve stem protrusions correct, you can just grab a set of springs off the shelf, drop them in, put the locks on it, and you're good to go. But if you want to blueprint it and you want to do it again 100 percent proper and correct each one of these individual springs are checked at a certain installed height because it is a progressive spring the more you compress it the tighter the the pressures get so each individual spring would be tested it would be tested at the installed height that it will be at once you put the retainer onto the valve that way you know exactly what your seat pressures are Knowing what your seat pressures are will, and getting them dialed in just right for the size of the valve and the expected RPM range of the engine does several things. Again, it can prevent valve float, prevent valve to valve contact, uh, potentially valve to piston on very tight tolerance engines where that, that uh, clearance is, is pretty close. It can also keep from having you know any type of coil bind on the spring oscillation of the spring itself which the spring can actually bounce off of its seat but and then also you know reducing that parasitic loss getting you more power more longevity more reliability but it takes time to do that to measure each individual spring and then once the head is assembled there's another step of that process it's actually putting a fixture on top of the cylinder head and simulating where the valve position would be at top dead center of that exhaust stroke. So you see exactly the clearance between the two valves. You literally press the valves open based on the cam specs at TDC lift and you know that that's the highest in that moment that the, the or the closest that the valves will come in contact with each other or in proximity of each other. And then you would measure that clearance between the two valves. On the other end of it is the combustion chamber. You can take a blanket 10 thou, 20 thou, 30 thou off, or once you assemble the head, you fill this portion of the combustion chamber up with fluid, which tells you the volume in cubic centimeters, how many cc's, you've probably heard that term before, cc'ing a head. You measure that volume, and then you calculate how much material needs to be removed off the deck of the head in order to achieve a particular volume which will determine compression ratio based on the other factors. That's the basics. 
And if you consider all of these components that have to go together in the cylinder head, how far, how, how long they need to last, the temperatures that they're faced with with the exhaust valve, uh, everything moving and clicking and popping inside these things. That's a lot of things to measure and it's a lot of things that you have to make sure are proper and correct. Now you can follow the first method and, and you know again following the same suit as I mentioned in the first in the first episode. You know that difference between a spec cylinder head which is perfectly fine and then you have generic off-the-shelf ones that are mass-produced in a factory and then you have precision machined ones and ones that are custom tailored for you. And I hope this helps you to understand again why custom built and designed cylinder heads can be so expensive. Then you add all of those things to the various grade of the components themselves and the various levels of the precision of that machine work and by which it can be done. It really explains why you see such a broad price range when it comes to cylinder heads. The fact is the better the components, the better the design, the closer the tolerances are to the original blueprint means you can get more performance and it still be reliable. And that's why you pay more for it. Since we haven't even gotten to cams, cylinders, pistons, etc., we're going to need more episodes to this series. So next week, we'll talk about pistons, cylinders, boring, and honing. Now, I've put up a link in case you missed episode one. I'll put it up here, along with our link to our playlist for all of our other Harley Tech videos, which are right here. And guys, again, I can't thank you for watching. Uh, thank you enough uh, for watching and, and supporting the channel and uh, all of your comments and likes and shares. I really enjoy interacting with you guys. So I hope you have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.